Hello, so another look at the, the chain rule. We saw the chain rule in exercise 10A.1, which we had a lesson video on. And I now want to, um, well, just remind you of it and take a bit further, get a bit more practice. So first of all, I've got a starter for you. There's a mixed bag of um, differentiations of a variety of sorts and see if you can do them. Um, if you can't do them, that implies that we need to, to have a check up on a few of these. So pause the video, do these 10 questions and then check your answers. Let's say a mixed bag, there are... Um, a variety of questions there which uh, are easy and others which are a bit harder. So have a look. And here are the answers. And there's the answers according to me at least um, when I last did them. So anyway, so you've got an example for us um, on the chain rule. Uh, find dy by dx for this. So first of all, I suppose we should be thinking to ourselves, well, we don't like it like that. Let's write it instead like this. So the power is minus 1. And when you do that, suddenly you can use the chain rule. Bring down the power, times minus 2, lots of x squared, minus 5x. Knock off the power, that's minus 2. Don't forget now to times by the differential of this, which is 2x minus 5. So I suppose this would be better written. I'm going to write it down here. dy by dx equals minus 2 lots of this lot, which I suppose would be better written as 10 minus 4x divided by the x squared minus 5x. Now notice it's to the power of minus 2. I've put it on the bottom, that's why it's down there, but I shall keep the 2. It loses the negative power. Find the coordinates of the stationary point. Oh, right. um, stationary point, you should perhaps write something like this when you're doing this in, in the exam. Stationary point when dy by dx equals 0. So you should clearly show that you know that's true. Therefore, 10 minus 4x over that bracket squared equals 0. And the great thing about fraction equals 0 is effectively you can move that bit over. When you times anything by 0, you get 0. So therefore, 10 minus 4x equals 0. Let's just get the top left over. It's great. It disappears. And if that's true, I reckon if you get 4x equals 10 or x equals 5 or 2 or 2.5, something like that. So it says coordinate, um, it doesn't say x, so I think I need a y. So I just need to now substitute 5 over 2 into this. I might do that on my calculator. I uh, don't want to make a dark mistake. So it's 2 divided by, well I'm going to type it in a bit lazily, 2.5 squared minus 5 times 2.5. That's all in brackets. You might have done it as a fraction, but I didn't. And I get minus 8 25ths. So hopefully I've typed that in right. That's where the stationary point. Now it says now sketch it. Um, and I, it says use your GDC to draw a sketch of the graph. Now I haven't got my graphical calculator with me. Uh, I'll just get Desmos up and do it on that. So according to Desmos, when I've typed it in, um, my pen's disappeared on me. There it is. Um, according to, come back. According to Desmos, when I've typed it in, it's just looked like that. It's got a set of axes. And I think it's between 0 and 5. It's got this kind of shape. Presumably this is the maximum point, as it turns out. That's equal. And it seems to have a couple of asymptotes. One there at 5, and it goes like this. And then another like that. Now that's another asymptote. And I think I've got some answers. That looks right. Stationary point looks right. Oh, well, I actually did have the graph already drawn and you didn't bother with Desmos. So now I want to look at the um, the same th idea. We're, we're going to try and differentiate using these e to the x graphs and try and then sketch the graph. Now, we've got the advantage of uh, being able to use the calculator, um, the graphical calculator. This would certainly be a lot harder without the calculator. And we can talk about that later on, perhaps. But first of all, it wants us to find the stationary point. So the very first thing I want to do is do dy by the x. And you should now know they bring the 2 down, 2e to the 2x minus e to the x. Now it wants me to find the stationary point, so we now already know that we find the stationary point from dy by the x is 0. And you're probably better to chuck this into your calculator, uh, into a factorised form. And that gives me 2e to the x minus 1. And the great thing about e to the x is it's never equal to 0. You should know by now the graph of e to the x looks like that. Um, and that is 1, and this gets closer and closer to 0, but it'll never ever touch. So when's it equal to 0? Never. No solutions. So 
So that's no solutions. But this one, um, it's 2e to the x minus 1 equals 0. And I reckon if I do that, I get e to the x equals a half. And x, therefore, is log a half. I just checked on my calculator, actually. And it's 0.693 there. So um, that tells me, uh, uh, is it minus 6, 1.693? Actually, I'll just check that again. The log of, um, of a half. Yes, it's minus 6, 0.693. Now that tells me around here somewhere, in line with there, um, on my on this graph, there's a turning point. So we're starting to think, well, right, what's it look like? We probably do need a y value for that. So I'm going to chuck this value of log of a half into my initial function. So obviously e lots of 2 log a half minus e to the log of a half. So if I just do that in my calculator now, it's e to the 2 log a half minus e to the log of a half. Well, I think I've typed it wrong. I've got a I might have scored it, sorry. So if that's true, therefore I can I can definitely say that. Now I'm going to use the GDC to do this graph. In fact, I'm going to cheek it over. I know I've already typed it in. So let's just turn the ones here there. Log a half minus a quarter. So that's right. Now notice this is where my that one, in fact, it must be that's um Oh, that, yeah, this point here was, if you remember, minus 0 0.693. And that's comma minus a quarter. That's where my turning point is. Now, at some point, we need to do that, perhaps without the calculator, the line went so heavily. Tangents and normals, so a third type of question. So I don't know why this is taking so long to do this. Oh, I've got the answers eventually. So we've got y equals log of x squared minus 3. So what have I got to do? I've got to find the coordinates. Um, so I might as well do, uh, well, I might as well set the y equal to log x squared minus 3 equal to 0. And if that's the case, then x squared minus 3, the log moves over becomes e, and therefore x squared minus 3 equals 1, x squared equals 4, and therefore I've got two points, x equals plus or minus 2. So I don't know what the graph looks like. I've got two points. One I'm going to call a at minus 2, and one I'm going to call b at 2. Now, it wants the normals for this. So the very first thing, to get normals, you've got to find the tangents first. So to get the tangents, you find dy by the x. This is where your brain's going to work. Now, to um, differentiate log of x squared minus 3, we use a chain rule again. That, and you should probably recall that if y equals log of x, then if you differentiate it, dy by the x becomes 1 over x. So that tells me I'm going to get a 1 over thing. And it'll be 1 over that x squared minus 3. But what you should remember then times by the differential of this and I get 2x. So effectively it's 2x over x squared minus 3. Now that's dy by dx but I need to know at a, I sub minus 2 in there, um, dy by dx equals, if I put minus 2 into there I get minus 4 and if I put minus 2 into here I get, is there a square? I nearly went wrong there, it's a squared squared minus 3. So um, that's why um, when you square it, you get 4 minus 3 is 1. So that's minus 4. Now of course, that's m1 is minus 4. So therefore m2, the tangent, uh, the normal, sorry, is um, plus a quarter. And that b, I'll do a similar trick. I do dy by the x equals. And if I put um, x equals 2 into that, I get 4 over 2 squared is still 4, minus 3 is still 1, so that's over 1, which is 4. So m1 is 4, not minus now, m2 therefore is minus a quarter. So I've got to get to a normals now, so I've got my tangents. I can use the fact that a is effectively 2 comma 0, no sorry, minus 2 comma 0, and b is effectively 2 comma 0. So at a, to a first, my equation in a straight line, uh, y minus y1, which is 0, equals m. Now this is at a, so that's equal to a quarter of x minus, now this is at a, so that's plus 2. Uh, that which basically gives me the equation y equals a quarter x 
plus um, a half two quarters. And that B, if I do B, a similar trick is y minus naught equals minus a quarter. That's x minus two, so very similar, minus a quarter, x plus a half. Now, when will these two equations hit each other? Well, that's what it says. When will they meet? So when the y coordinates are equal to each other, so I can go a quarter x plus a half equals minus a quarter x plus a half. And I think that's quite nice because that gets me um, a half x. But on the other side, I get zero, which means x must equal zero. And if x is zero, I can therefore find y. I can turn it into either equation. Let's chuck it into this one. Uh, therefore, y equals um, a quarter of uh, zero is zero plus, uh, sorry, it's a half. Quite easy to do. So that's what I reckon my equation was. Yeah, my point was, and there it is, 0, 0,5. Um, and this is a reminder of the formula I've just used. If I'm not sure if you can see it. So this is saying how I've done this. And I've got one more example, I hope, because I'm running out of time. Find the gradient of y equals sine 3x. So sine 3x, let's find my pen again. Um, so, well, the we, first thing we should do is find dy by the x, and by now you should have remembered the sine cos minus sine minus cos trick. And we're coming down as we're differentiating it, so it's just a cos, and therefore this is 3 cos 3x. And it says find the gradient when x is pi, so I've got a sub pi in. So when x equals pi, I get y by dx equals 3 cos of 3 pi. Now, cos graph does this. Not my best graph ever, you get the idea. That's um, pi by 2, that's pi. That's 2 pi, that's 3 pi. So this is minus 1. So I think the gradient is minus 3. Hence, find the equation of the tangent at that point. So I've got y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. If I chuck some values in here, do I know my values yet? Not quite yet. Um, I've got y equals sine 3x. Now this is at the point pi, so 3 pi. And 3 pi, a great thing about sine curves is on all the pi's it's equal to 0. So that's 1 pi, 2 pi's, 3 pi's. So this equals 0. So it's y minus 0 equals minus 3 x minus pi. So y equals minus 3x plus 3 pi. That's what I think it is anyway. Or you could write it the other way around, I suppose. No, I actually didn't. I just left it like that. Oh, I have got one more question. Find and classify all the stationary points for e to the sine x. Well, this is a bit more complicated. Um, it's more complicated. We've got e's and sine together. So let's first of all just write dy by dx equals. So a chain rule again basically you say when you get an e to the x it stays the same. So e to the sine x. But now I have to have treated this like an x I now have to differentiate it which is cos x. So I've got a final stationary points. So you get stationary points when it's equal to zero like I mentioned before. So either this is equal to zero or cos of x is equal to zero. Now cos of x is the easy one. It's the easy one to understand cos of x equals 0, you can write x equals the inverse cos of 0, and you get a solution when you do that at, um, at pi. Um, and I mean, I've shown you the graph of cos of x already, so it does that. And in the range 0 to 2 pi, in fact, that's the, oh no, it's equal to 0, isn't it? So pi by 2, I was doing minus 1. So it's got pi by 2, and we've got a second one at 3 pi by 2. So we've got there and there. So that's that um, part of it done, but we've still got e to the sine x equal to naught. And although it looks weird, we do know this rule that e to the sine x is never equal to zero. So this has got no solutions. So in actual fact, um, we've got these solutions, um, pi by 2 and 3 pi by 2. And the one thing I didn't do, I didn't chuck those values into my original equation to get values. And I suppose I could do that quite easily. Apparently it's e in 1 over e. And that's the end of this then. So, um, and there's the graph as a matter of interest. So in lesson, uh, there's a bit more to do, but I'll do that next time.